Hey everybody, it's Matt from Smite Club over here with the first of hopefully many vlogs talking about League of Legends. Uh, this vlog is going to be about Fiora, the Grand Duelist, the newest champion that Riot will be uh, shoving out onto the servers, hopefully this coming Tuesday. Um, Fiora is a... It's styled after kind of a French duelist, which I, I think is kind of a nice aesthetic. It was discovered by um, a State of the League user called Nomad. I've got a lot of information over on this monitor over here, so that's why I'm looking over there. Um, basically, she is going to be a melee champion that closes a lot of distance with her attacks and um, kind of raises some questions about how potentially broken she could be. Sometimes a little bit, I'm a little bit cynical with Riot and that they tend to release some overpowered champions at launch, and then once they've reaped the uh, the bundle monies, they tend to nerf them into oblivion. I'm looking at you, Xin Zhao, Vladimir, Ari, other champions. Sona, yeah, Sona was pretty broken at launch too. Um, so let's go over her abilities, shall we? Uh, her passive is called Duelist. Again, all of these uh, all of these skills are going to be based off of sword. Um, references or duelist references. Um, so her innate is called duelist. Uh, she regenerates a certain amount of health over six seconds every time she deals physical damage. When she deals physical damage against a champion, it stacks up to four times. Uh, I think this sets it apart. Um, the whole champion or not thing sets things apart because it's not going to be like Udyr was when he had an innervating locket that would uh, proc health regen after off every hit. Um, Fiora is not going to be able to jungle with this ability just because uh, of the champion distinction. She's not going to be able to hit uh, mobs in the jungle and have that stack up to four times because I think that would be a little bit too much sustain for a melee champion who's supposed a little bit on the wayfish side. I don't think we'd be building this uh, champion tanky. Um, her Q is called Lunge. She dashes forward and strikes a target, dealing, again, physical damage. Uh, she can perform a dash a second time within a couple seconds at no mana cost. So like Ari, um, Ari's ult, rather, she's going to be able to like dash in, dash out, which makes sense with the motif, but um, a free blink, um, which doesn't seem to have that much skill involved, um, ag again... Well, not, not like LeBlanc. LeBlanc's blink just teleports her back where she started. I think this skill can be used both defensively and offensively in the sense that she can dash in and then dash back out, or she could dash in and then, like, go a second direction farther deeper into enemy territory. Um, there's no word on whether this is going to be a skill shot or a um, target attack. I'm just going off what we have of League of Legends Wikia at the moment. But um, considering it's got a fairly high cooldown in earlier... Um, in early levels. It starts off with a 16 second cooldown. I think it's just going to be a, um, excuse me, it's going to be primarily an escape um, mechanism and a uh, definitely a 1v1 skill just to close that gap. Um, she's going to be able to get in close and use the rest of her skills, which I think will be valuable. Um, her W is called Repost. Um, her the passive on that is that her attack damage is increased, uh, starting at 15 and then ending with 35 um, extra attack damage when she levels it to level 5. Um, her active on this, however, is that she parries the next basic attack uh, from a champion or a monster and reflects magic damage back to the attacker. So once she gets attacked by a basic uh, attack, not an ability, uh, she's going to um, counterattack with a uh, magic damage, which, which is kind of why I said that she's going to be both a AD or a magic damage champion based on what she... Um, the summoner builds, rather. Um, the only thing that I don't really like about this, it's only 40 mana. It's got a range of 20. The bonus AD, again, that's fine, the passive. Um, starts off with a 10 second cooldown. At level 5, it's it's 6 seconds. But the magic damage um, is a 1.0 per, or 1 damage per ability power, so it scales very well. Um, and at level 5, it gives an extra 200 damage base, and then 1 for every ability power afterwards. So this really has... Um, the potential to be pretty game breaking, and I'm going to guess that it's going to be used and abused for the first little while. Um, a thought just came to me here, though, is that when she gets in on an opponent, she's going to be able to use this attack as a defense mechanism, much like Jax's Counter Strike, where he gets a, a certain amount of dodge for a certain amount of time, and then is able to stun. However, instead of a stun, um, she's going to be able to do damage, and a lot of it, especially how well she scales. 
Her E is called Burst of Speed. Uh, she gains attack speed for three seconds, starting with 60% attack speed at uh, level one, and then a blistering 140% attack speed at level five. This is crazy sauce. Crazy sauce. Um, she can do this every 15 seconds for 55 mana, which does not seem like a lot of um, cooldown for a ability that crazy. Especially at later levels, like 140% um, attack speed, that's scary. Let's put it that way. Um, th it gets even worse because if she lands a basic attack or a lunge, her Q, uh, while during this time, during this three seconds, um, it stacks. So it adds another 7 at level 1 and 15% movement speed, not, um, excuse me, that's that's a lie, it wasn't a stack, rather. Um, it stacks, but it adds movement speed instead of attack speed, so the attack speed is flat, but the more hits that she lands, the more movement speed she's going to be getting. So she's going to be getting uh, upwards almost, um, she could be getting an extra 45% movement speed if she lands all three hits during this three seconds. It is only three seconds, so it's not going to last that long, but she's going to be very scary during this time. It's like kind of a, it's extreme steroid. This champion's built off a lot of steroids. Um, her ultimate is called Blade Waltz. She, uh, this is kind of been uh, compared to Omni Slash um, from the Final Fantasy games. So she's going to be able to walk around the battlefield and strike at, uh, random champions five times for physical damage. So um, I think how this is outlined is that she's going to be able to hit five champions if they're in a certain area. And if there's only one champion within that area, it's going to hit five times just to that one champion. So, she's just going to be either a monster 1v1 or do a lot of damage to a lot of champions, kind of in an AoE burst. The range is 400. Uh, it's a little um, less than her lunge. Her lunge has a range of 600, so she's going to be able to lunge in and then use this blade waltz almost as a kind of a bandage toss and curse of the sad mummy um, combo from Amumu. Um, again, if this lunge is a skill shot rather than a... Um, Lunge is a skill shot rather than a targeted attack. I think it'll make it a little bit more. It'll require a little bit more skill to use, so it won't necessarily be as uh, infuriating. However, her difficulty um, on League of Legends Wikia um, is fairly low, so I'm leaning towards this isn't going to be a skill shot. Um, going back to Blade Waltz, however, uh, she um, strikes against the same target are going to be 35% less effective. Um, and the first and last attack are going to be against the same champion. So this kind of works like Master Yi's Alpha Strike, where there's going to be certain situational uses for it, depending on where you want to end up and where you want to start. Um, again, if the champion that's being attacked can like move back behind enemy lines, Fiora's going to end up there once the ultimate ends. So it might be able to be used you know, in a certain advantage, depending on how wary the uh, champions are. The There's a lot of physical damage added behind this. They're saying that Initially, it's going to cause 100, 140 extra uh, physical damage and end with an extra 440, which is not um, not small. Let's put it that way. It is not small. There's no word on the ratios on that, however. The cooldowns are a little bit over uh, 2 minutes. It's going to be 150 and then go down to 110 at level 3, and it's going to cost 100 mana. So, again, very low mana cost um, for all her skills, to be honest, like the... I don't think she's going to have to build a lot of mana, and but alternatively, she could have been a energy champ. I could see kind of that fitting into the duelist motif. Um, no word on price or how um, if she's going to be a 6300 champ. I, I have no doubt that she's going to be a 6300 champ. Um, so I'm not sure what to think, because with melee champions, especially melee auto-attack carries like this, um, there's a something like I like to call the Jack Syndrome. And what happens with the Jack Syndrome is that whenever um, you have to get in in order to use your skills, and you have to kind of ramp up, especially with these uh, stacking abilities, the thing is, is that if they're built too tanky and have an absurd amount of burst damage, they're going to be labeled to OP pretty quickly. But if they're realistic and they're saying, okay, you have to get in, you have to use your skills in order to avoid damage, and you have to be able to ramp up, and then you'll be able to clear out who you need to. The problem is, is that they're so waifish that they're going to get CC'd and then wrecked. Um, she doesn't have any 
kind of immunities so far um, in terms of CC. Maybe the, during the lunge. I can see during the lunge he won't be able to be caged or stunned or whatever. Um, it might be like Yi's Alpha Strike that when the animation is finished she'll be affected by the uh, CC. Um, but I can see Fiora going into a team fight and then just getting bursted down or getting CC just into the ground. Um, however, with all this um, attack speed and movement speed, she's going to be in the lunges rather. She's going to be able to chase down champions very well and one v one them to death, especially with the blade waltz. Um, Otherwise, I'm not sure really what to think. I really like her aesthetic. She's kind of like this French duelist, very elegant. Um, her lore came out today, which is pretty much um, classic tale of revenge, very swashbuckling. I can see her having good, um, kind of like a good theme with Talon and a good theme with all those kind of aristocracy um, champions that we've seen. I don't think she has anything in terms of allegiances. I think she's more of a, um, actually, no, she's going to be a uh, Damasian. So we may see a commando skin out of her. I would really like seeing a commando skin out of her, but it does not seem uh, in the book she looks a little too um, classy for all that. She's almost like a vein, only with a sword instead of, instead of a uh, crossbow on her wrist. Um, so that looks to be all for Fioria. Um, again, thank you for joining us for the first vlog of the Smite Club season. You guys can follow us on YouTube, Twitter, Tumblr, and own TV. Yeah, that, I knew I was forgetting one main one there. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for joining us. Have a good night.